Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. Uh, we're here today with the ESOP EM235. It is a MIG only version of the 235, so it only MIG welds. Um, but today we're gonna talk about a comparison of this machine to its competitors. We're gonna go over some specs that it has. We're gonna bring in an expert on this machine and ask a few questions. Um, and then we're also gonna weld with the machine. We're gonna do some demonstrations with it. Um, and we're gonna go over some at the very end, we're going to go over some dislikes, likes, that kind of thing. So to get you started off here, the 235 <clears throat> came out along with the 235 EMP, which is the multi-process. This machine is a MIG only. So the market that they were targeting, so it's a 235, 240 amp machine. So what happens, they were targeting the people that run 035 wire. So across America, so say 85% of the fab shops in America are MIG welding. So that means it, they're only using MIG. They're not doing the multi-process where they want to TIG stick to functions too. So they're only using MIG. And then of the 85%, the majority of them are running 035 wire. So the 035 wire is gonna range between 10 volts and 26 volts. This machine was optimized for 035 solid wire. Now it'll also run 045 flux core wire and you can run stainless and aluminum through a spool gun, which we're gonna give that a shot later on. But to go over some specs, so this thing will do 110, 220. On 120 or 110, 110 volt for a regular wall plug, it'll go up to 19 volts on MIG. And then if you plug it into 220, it'll do 26 volts. Um, so it's a pretty versatile machine. It's uh, got a lot of uh, different, you know, it's got you, wide range for what you get in the package. So as you can see on the front of the machine, looks a little different than the regular Rebel series, but you have your voltage control, your amperage control, and then it has a uh, the selector for the gauge material that you're going to use. So we can go 24 gauge all the way up to half inch. So on this unit, it does have the Smart Mig feature. It just doesn't. It's not the LCD screen, but the smart fig feature still is in play with this thing. So you can see here, you got a selector in steel, stainless steel, aluminum, and then flux core. And then you choose what wire size you want, and that's the smart mag function right there. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about duty cycle. So on 230 volt duty cycle on this machine is is 26 volts at 240 amps, and that's at 40 percent. But as you can see, we can max this machine out to 30 volts and then on our amperage or wire feed speed selector here we can go up to 700 inches a minute which is pretty amazing now this machine will back down to 12 volts and 80 inches per minute on wire feed speed so it's, it's got a wide range of versatility in it um it's pretty sweet we're going to give it a shot and try it out on some uh thinner gauge material some thicker stuff uh, as far as the comparison with its competition so it's going to fit into that millermatic 252 and that that Lincoln 260 MP machine. It's going to be in that place. So the Millermatic 252 is going to run you about 2800. The Lincoln's going to run you about 2500, and this machine is going to be 2000. So you can see price. It's priced out competitive. It still compares power-wise everything competitively to those machines. Um, it's more portable than those other two machines. I mean, we could throw this in the back of a truck. It's 55 pounds roughly somewhere in there, and whereas that 252 is you. You can't do that that 260 you definitely can't do that they're both heavy units so for the money for the size and the power this unit might be something you want to look at and uh we're going to give it a shot bring in the expert ask him some popular questions and then we're going to weld with it but today one of our reps stopped by uh mr mench here thanks for coming by john hey andrew really appreciate it nice seeing you again so john i got a couple of questions for you we got first one that comes to mind is uh when they're deciding to buy these machines they want to go 215 or 235 what what's the deciding factor uh, basically the deciding factor is going to be um, do a you know you're going to get more amperage out of a 235 than a 215 you're going to get more duty cycle out of a 235 versus a 215 and also you will get you'll have that, that ability to run a uh, larger spool in the machine like a 44 pound spool for example which is going to cost you less per pound when you start using more and more wires so uh, 10 pound spools are typically more expensive per pound. So those are the three real key things there. Otherwise you've got 110, 220 capability, 
uh, functionality is not really any different, okay. so it's, you know. Can you spray with that 215? That was another popular one. Can you spray transfer with that as opposed to this? So the 215 was optimized to run on, on 030 wire, right? So with 030 wire, I get the full range. I can take a 30 thousandths diameter wire and get it up into a spray transfer with the correct gas. We want to be on like a, right around a 90 10 yep. mixture, yep. Um, roughly 90 10. You can do it with 85 15. There's a number of things out there, the ways you can do it. Um, but you can get that 030 wire up into a spray transfer on the 215. So it will do it. You just got to get the right gas. But this one's better suited to do it. This one's better suited on the on the 235. I can run an 035 wire and get it up into a spray okay. transfer. Okay. Very cool. Now, another question they have is smart MIG. Now, this machine has smart MIG. Is it the same as the other smart MIG function on the other Rebel series? Yes. So, this you're correct. This machine does have smart MIG. Um, it does have the same functionality in the smart MIG. It just has a different user interface than the multi-process unit. Okay. So, um, what am I losing with that? With the loss of the screen? I guess it just looks different. I mean, is that really the only thing that we're changing? We're not getting all the losing functionality with it or you're just your well number one that screen is is set up primarily for our multi-process function okay. so we had to have a way to switch and make it easy for the customer to find okay i want to move to uh, stick i want to move to tig okay. this machine all i'm doing is mig so really all i need is wire feed and voltage right um so the other thing that you get on a on a multi-process screen with the rebel is the owner's manual there's some owner's manual piece uh, pieces in there there's uh, parts information in there so there are some other things that are in that you're paying extra for on that multi-process panel okay um that you know some people they just don't need it they can yep. come Send in here and do this. Oh, okay so. um another question with <clears throat> what when they're deciding this so this is just a mig only yes what they make an emp where where am i gonna pull the trigger on buying an EMP or just a MIG only? Where, where's the where's the line on that? What would be a deciding factor? It's a, it's a tough one. If it's me, I kind of look at what am I going to get into most of the time. If if I can run MIG on, on any project, really all I need is a MIG machine. If I want to be able to get into stick or maybe I want to learn TIG or maybe I want to maybe I want to do a lot of TIG, then I'll get into a multi-process machine. I'm one of those people that likes to kind of, I like to kind of save my money. So if it's like 500 bucks, I mean, that could mean get a welding helmet, get a jacket, get some gloves and a machine, right? Yep. Otherwise you're, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things. You gotta really look at what you want to try to accomplish in your project or in the work that you're doing. So um, yep. we can help you out, you know, when they, when they call up bakers or they, you know, sometimes customers talk to me about it. We can really help you decide what's okay. See, in my opinion, I would go just, if, if you're only going to take weld once a year, buy the EM. You're only going to make weld. Exactly. You know what I mean? And 90% and of the people I talk to, they only make weld with a multi-function machine. So it's true. why not just buy this and save yourself 500 bucks, buy another welding helmet or, or something along the lines. I'm with you on that. Um, so one, more, one last question, John. What, what does it, oh wait, I got this machine set up. What doesn't it come with? What, right out of the box. I mean, it seemed like it came with everything. So uh, what? I mean, pretty much, uh, you just got to get a bottle of gas. Really? <laughs> but, you know, the the thing I uh, I always like to do is make sure I got a spare set of nozzles, spare uh, some some contact tips, yep, a yep. diffuser. Always have like an extra diffuser laying around. You never know what you're going to run into. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Well, we'll list that below in the comment or down below with the drop down boxes. Um, when we before we start getting well, we're going to do some short circuit. We're going to bump it up in the spray transfer and we're going to run some flux core with this unit. So let's grab our stuff and we'll get it set up. Perfect. All right, John, so we got, we got our set up here. Um, we're going to grab some eighth inch material and give this thing a shot. So on the front of this machine, I was just noticing I, I got it set for 035 wire, which we're running. Um, we're going to go to eighth inch, which is between 12 and 10 gauge. So right about 11. So it gives us 178. Now I did notice though, when I turn this all the way up to give me more wire feed speed, this starts to blink. Why, why does it do that? So on the machine, it's got, since the, the potentiometer here is kind of, it's, it's limited yeah. to where it can go just the uh, beginning and the end, I've got to make sure I'm within the correct range of 035, which is about 400 inches a minute. So if I just kind of tweak the, the knob back, it'll, it'll get me back to that 400 inch a minute wire feed speed 
and we know that smart mig is tuned okay. to that now will it still weld while that's flashing or will it not it will not weld while okay. that's flashing okay just a good note to point out because i saw a flash i don't know just some questions that might arise from it i thought maybe if it didn't weld someone's going to wonder right. is my machine broke no it's not broke you're just above the output on yep. it. okay and, and you know another point if they do need more wire feed speed in that situation we can switch it over to manual mode i can now run up to 700 okay. inches a minute of wire speed. So hop off smart mig and then yes. set it manually. Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll run, we'll go down back down to 10 gauge here, give this thing a shot. Um, what kind of wire did you bring with us today? Um, this is the Aristal rod, 35 diameter, okay. uh, 10 pound spool. Uh, actually, the machine comes with a 10 pound spool of this. I don't know if you noticed it, but right on that start, it kind of felt like it had a little bit more voltage. Yeah. Because yeah. we were we were playing around with it at a higher setting there before okay. you did this. Okay. So that smart mig is doing what yeah. it's supposed to do. So it tunes that back down. Yep. And, okay. and it actually took your voltage down from where it started. It actually you began right around that 20 volt range okay. when you were tacking, and then now it's down to about 18 volts. Okay. So makes a big difference. Yeah. No, that was nice. It tuned right in. It turned out pretty good. Um, let's say you want to get up in the spray transfer, give it a shot. Yeah, we got to switch the gas out. And, yep. Yeah. I'll grab the gas pile and we'll Perfect. Go we got her set up for a spray transfer here. Um, so for anybody that doesn't know or has never spray transferred, it's just a straight progression, no manipulation, five degree push angle. We're just gonna run straight across the plate. We changed out the gas to a 90-10 mixture. Gave us a little bit more argon content to achieve that spray transfer. We're just going to do a multi-pass weld and uh, give this thing a shot. <laughs> lays down a heck of a mark. Check that out. Wow. Real nice. Digging in pretty good. Digging in real nice. And that's on 035 wire. Remember, that we're, we're, we're pushing. That's pretty cool. For, for the heck of it, let's, let's max it out. You sure about that? Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna go 30 volts and what? 700 Seven. inches a minute. We'll give it a shot. Let's go. Wow, pretty spectacular. Right, it's actually pretty smooth. Yeah, it's for, uh, real smooth. 700. So you're at 240 amps, about 29.7, 30 volts. So you're seeing pretty pretty consistent and that's that's maximum output that's yeah. pretty cool not bad that's something else pretty smooth too uh, great art control yeah yeah wire speed was fast you could tell that <laughs> it's coming out of there pretty yeah. quick that's pretty cool well um let's uh let's give this thing a shot we're going to change out the contact tip and uh the wire and we're going to run some flux core with it let's uh get it set up with flux core i see you got some new flux core here Tell me about it and show me the setup on this thing. Yeah, no problem. Um, so this is our Dual Shield 710XM, runs on a mixed gas, 7525, just like your standard solid wire MIG. Um, great running product, uh, three key things here, better, faster, easier. What's nice is, uh, better wise, it's got a very nice smooth arc, low spatter, uh, faster, I can run out of position quicker than almost any other uh, MIG welding process and then easier. It's very forgiving for the operator that tends to have a little bit change in electrical stick out as they're welding. Uh, when we're running flux core, we want to make sure we change out to a knurled drive roller. This is an 045 serrated drive roller. You kind of see the difference in the grooves. Uh, we're, we don't want to run a V-groove drive roller because that will smash a tubular flux cord wire. So what we're going to do is switch that out and then I'm going to change my contact tip. I'm going to go from a 035 contact tip to an 045. So and does it come with that drive roll? It comes with this drive roll really? and it also comes with a spare 045 contact tip. Um, but only one, so you probably want to get more. And the liner is good too? The liner is good. It's a 035, 045 liner that's okay. in that gun. So I'll have to change that out. Yes. So really simple to change that out. I'm going to take off the little, uh, little screw that's holding on the other drive roll. Slide the old one off. Put the new one on so you're reading 045. And there's a little keyway in there, so you got to kind of turn the drive roll until it slides on. 
Then I'm going to put my thumb wheel back on here and make sure it's make sure it's snug. And that's it. And sometimes when you cut this flux cord wire, if you got a if you got a pair of cutters that are a little smashed, um, it will actually smash the wire a little bit and make it difficult to get it into the drive system. So um, might want to make sure you got a good set of whelpers like like the ones that Andrew has here. These are channel lock whelpers too. They're pretty nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change out that contact tip. The John's messing with that wire, so we got no 45 contact tip. And let's just pick uh, just to play around with some numbers. Uh, for three sixteenths, we're 230 inches a minute on wire speed, and we're going to run 25 volts and roughly 230. You know, 228, 236. It's close enough. Close enough. Cool. I'm do a drag progression, about a five degree drag. Uh, keep about a uh, half inch to three quarter inch electrical stick out. So from the contact tip to the workpiece. Yep. And just do a nice steady drag with it. Smooth. That's, nice. the, that's the low end of the wire. We're at about 140 amps with that. So, and here's that slag coverage that we're talking about, but it just pops right off. It makes a beautiful weld. Now this is also all positioned, so you can take this straight vertical up. Yeah, what do you want to position it? You want to attack it or just point it straight in there and run straight uphill, Andrew. And being all position wire, you could do this vertical, overhead. Check out that. That's probably like to run a little hotter on that thicker material, yeah. Yeah. but for what we're trying to show off, I mean, I, I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Wire. Heck yeah. Let's take it up to the high end quick and we'll call this a wrap. What do you think? Heck yeah. So, which is 400 inches a minute, and I'm pulling right off the panel here, 27 and a half volts. So let's let it rip. A lot more weld metal. Yeah, yeah. Real nice. Real nice. And that flux chips off there really nice too. That's it's a smooth run on wire. That thing runs good. So I mean in total evaluation of the machine, I mean if we're just MIG welding, this is it. This is it. Yeah. I mean why would we why would we go multi-process? Why just and for the price point, you can't go wrong. Right. I mean, you right. saw that twenty-seven and a half volts on flux car. You yeah. go above. Not too many people go above that. No, so, not too many. Yeah. Perfect tool. Yeah, sure. it's a it's a great machine for you know even home hobbyist, uh, small production shop, yeah. exhaust shops, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, guys that are that are making uh, small fabrications, you know things like that. Obviously, you can see the thickness we can get into. Very versatile unit for, for that price. For that price wow. yeah. Well, thanks for coming out for us no today, showing off everything. No Perfect problem. Unit. All right. Anytime. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So to wrap up this video and go over some of the stuff that I did like, didn't like, I, I like the machine because portability, um, man, the art characteristic is great and it welds really nice. If all you're doing is MIG welding, I'd go with this. What I didn't like about the machine um is is the max capabilities on it so i don't know you know 045 stretching solid wire 045 out it's not going to do it to peak performance you can do it but it won't do it well um but for 035 030 applications it rocks the world so we're going to throw in a bundle for this thing so it's a 200 dollars bundle and with that bundle you get a full spool of the x-series wire that we demoed flux cord you get a bag of 035 contact tips, a bag of 045 contact tips, you get a bag of nozzles, flushed nozzles, and you get a pair of whelpers. That's for a $200 bundle. And then we're also going to throw a promo code out on this unit. So the promo code is Rebel EM 50 So we're going to give you $50 off the purchase. So thanks for watching my video. Stay tuned for more videos. Subscribe to our channel. 
Leave comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. And stay tuned. Thanks for watching.